Hello, everyone, and welcome to the original Rochester Press Box, our holiday edition. Bill Pucko joined, as always, by John DeTulio from the HTK. Thank you, Billy. It's great to be with you. <laughs> great job. Fox Sports 1280. You're such a pro. And how about, how do we describe that turtleneck? Buddy, this is my holiday turtleneck. I'm festive. Where's your festive? Come on. Right. It, well, we Nobody you wearing green, festive. nobody wearing red. I'm the only one who's in the spirit, Billy. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Catalano, 13 That's Rams. Right. And Fox Rochester. And Fox Rochester. <laughs> oh, yeah, Billy. And Dan Fates. Love. Where are you from, man? <laughs> <laughs> high school show. All right, the high school sports beat. Former Great intern on the back. former intern on the program. And, and current employee at market. Channel 13. Yeah, Billy, what you? Hey, we're looking at Channel. Look uh, <laughs> at Channel 13. We're looking at the year 2014, and you know what it all meant and everything on a national sense. Uh, what the year do for you, Danny? On a national sense, I always thought of uh, Derek Jeter. I guess I'll, I will always remember where I was. I was working at Applebee's when Jeter hit that ball, <laughs> scored the game-winning run for his last RBI in the last his last home game at Yankee Stadium. I'll be telling my kids about that. And just as a diehard baseball fan, I will always love Chipper Jones. I'll always love Ken Griffey Jr. And it didn't matter if you're a Red Sox fan or whoever you are, you were a Jeter fan. He was baseball for kids like me growing up. Everything was Jeter, from baseball cleats to batting gloves, the way he played the game. You know, as a leader on my baseball teams, as captains, he was the guy you wanted to be. Plus, he was probably the coolest guy ever. That moment was just amazing because yeah. it was it, the progression and all the things that had to happen leading to it, and you saw it coming. Three batters before, you like you saw it coming. And when he gives up the home run, when Robertson gives up the home run, and Jeter's yeah. choking back tears, and it's like, better get his batting gloves on. He's got a shot at this. And it, it was picturesque, the perfect way for the greatest captain to go out. Johnny, 2014. National story? Yeah. I got a couple. I, listen, for about two weeks, I actually watched soccer. I think the World <laughs> Cup, the phenomenon was at my, I actually took a lot of calls about soccer. And I was kind of caught up in this whole thing. How good are the, how far we've come. Maybe in my lifetime, we will win a World Cup. And the other story I just thought of was LeBron going back to Cleveland. That may be the number one story for me. From being from, being from that yeah. part of the country, being close to people in Ohio, what it means to those people, to see the King's career come full circle, I think it's the best story the NBA could ever hope for. Yeah, there's so much more to be written on that. Yep. Mike? My number one thing is the NFL in a league that at the same time makes more mistakes, has more public relations disasters, has what I believe yeah. is a person that is not competent in the job running the show, and yet they still maintain at the same time this immense connection with the country. Ratings are through the roof still, ticket sales, games are sold out, the game is still by far the most popular thing. They almost cannot mess it up. I think Roger Goodell had a pitiful year mm -hmm. as the commissioner of the NFL, had to do so much in order to try to maintain his spot, which then would cost him in other circumstances when you needed a strong voice. They did so many things wrong, but they're Teflon. They are absolute yep. Teflon because the NFL is so popular. And I think it really showed this year. No matter how many mistakes, they're still number one. And they, you know, they made, I mean, for me, the story was the lightning rod of uh, the national debate on domestic violence. That was all the NFL and Ray Rice is doing. Uh, pretty amazing how that went all And developed. they made mistakes at yep. like three different levels right. of that exact same story. Yet yep. it still doesn't hurt doesn't, the no, overall It doesn't product. resonate. It's like having a one-party system. It's having one party. They, they cannot, there's nobody on the other side screaming and hollering. It's that never fail league. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> we'll, be, we'll take a look at how things went locally in 2014 when the original Rochester Press Box continues. Are you one of the many Americans who undergo CPAP or BiPAP therapy? Replacing your supplies every three to six months is critical as bacteria will build up and worn out straps cause leaks. Call Allied Medical Supply Network and speak to an expert agent who will set up a schedule for your supplies to be delivered right to your door at little or no cost to you. Call Allied Medical Supply Network today and rest easy. Call 1-800-925-0141. That's 1-800-925-0141.
Welcome back to the original Rochester Press Box. Bill Pucko with John, Mike, and Danny. Uh, 2014 from a, a local aspect, Michael. What, uh, what was the story? It's Terry Pagula's world, and we're all just living <laughs> in it, right? I mean, he owns everything. You know that one Buffalo sent out a tweet the one day, and it was like, hey, within 24 hours, the Amherst won, the Bandits won, the Bills won, the Sabres won. Like, a, they had a good weekend because he owns all the franchises, and uh, obviously the biggest one by far was his purchase of the Bills. And I think that made it the big local story, certainly regional story for the year, because now when we see all these L.A. stories floating <laughs> out there, yeah. you can read them. You don't have to be yeah. a, afraid to look <laughs> at them to see how quickly they mention Buffalo. And I think for the region, Bills fan or not, I think for a lot of people, I think they're excited that the team isn't going anywhere. And there's going to be a lot still left to do with Terry Pagula. Doesn't make you think, like, what did we do to deserve this guy? I mean, oh. the, not even mentioned, he built a new field house in Houghton. <laughs> Which apparently yeah. people that have been there yeah. say it's a you know, palace. Yeah. For years, I think now Buffalo, if, if Doug Brown would ever get fired for whatever reason, that's a destination job. I know they don't have a quarterback. They've got an owner with deep pockets. They're going to get a new stadium, and they got an elite defense. Yeah. Buffalo, to me, now could attract the big-name coach. I really believe that. What was your story of the year locally? Locally would be Jake Zembeck. What happened with Aquinas. My lines were lit for two weeks. I didn't realize. I knew there was a lot of bias, I don't know, for lack of a better word. I know a lot of people don't like Aquinas. I didn't realize how many people actually hate that yeah. school. And it really, it, to me, it infuriated me, all the hate that came towards Aquinas, not at Jake, but at the athletic director in, what, uh, in the institution. <laughs> to me, that story was embarrassing for Section 5. If it involved anybody but Jake Zembeck, it would not have been a story. The state had right. would not have been called. The rule needs to be changed. So if he has shoulder pads on, he's eligible. It's a stupid rule. Aquinas, I know, broke the rule, but to me it was silly. They should It should have been rectified. Aquinas should have been allowed to play in the playoffs. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you anymore. And I knew it was a big deal when I had my friends in Buffalo and my friends in Pennsylvania. Oh, we were better. Get, it was laughing stock. And texting me going, hey, what's going on with this Zembat kid? And it's like... You don't have enough time. I go, it, it, there's just too much going on, and it's been run around in circles. It's, it's sad that you let adults take over the kids' game. The phrase I used a lot during that week was the holier-than-thous. Everybody who, look, John's right. Mistakes were made. Rules were not followed. There were mistakes. But some of the people that came out of the woodwork <laughs> acting as if yep. no other school ever makes a mistake, nobody has a problem, all blame going that way. And then some of the rhetoric going back and forth. Again, I'm with you. I think it was an embarrassing in total for Section 5, and it could have been avoided. Yeah, it got too personal for yeah. me. But, but I, think, I think, too, that you have to recognize, and I wonder how Aquinas, in, the, you know, in their own privateness, uh, came to grips with the fact that you know, this, this whole entitlement thing, and like, wow, did we know that there were this many people who were so anti-Aquinas football? Like I for found any out, good reason? I knew there was a certain percentage. I didn't realize. <laughs> to me, I was blown away by all the hate towards Aquinas. When what this allowed was people to speak to that hatred. Yes. Because in a lot of cases, just like, well, they're really good, and they recruit kids, because we all hear that all the time, right? Okay, well, that conversation usually goes a certain bit. Here, there was a mistake. There was a fault. I mean, they took it to court. Yeah, so there was a chance to get them. To get them, yeah. and to get them, and to get them. And, but I will say this, there should be all, a little introspection, too, on yeah. some of the ways that they handle things Correct. going forward. Amen. Way too personal. But now Jake is set at John's He's alma mater. He's at Penn mater, State. So. <laughs> Two years. Look out. He will lead us to the college football playoff. <laughs> <laughs> Jake said that, my man. Hey, he's got a shot. Why not? Well, that program's well. on the move right now, Billy. Danny, what do you got locally? <laughs> oh, locally, I think the last one, too. I always take a baseball spin to a lot of things, unless there's a hockey person on, but I'll take the baseball spin of Gene Glenn, you know, the local guy here, getting the shot and getting called up to, uh, to be the third base coach for the Twins. Really excited for him. He sat in this seat before, so it's pretty cool. And when I got to meet him, he was just the nicest guy ever. And, you know... Just great baseball that was played in Rochester, and you know, I like going to those games. It's going to be a little different. Yeah, I really enjoy Gene. He has a wealth of baseball knowledge and as nice a guy as you'll meet. And former Mr. Basketball in the state of Minnesota, the year before yes. Kevin McHale. Yes. Unbelievable. Thanks to Mike, yeah, Kevin. that's something. All righty. Hey, the Buffalo Bills will take a look into what maybe they can expect after a successful 2014. We'll look ahead and see what they might be thinking for 2015 when the original Rochester Press Box continues.
It's the Challenger Miracle Field, and it's being built in Webster for our physically and emotionally challenged friends. It'll cost a half a million dollars. Opening day is 2016. You can help make it happen. Check it out, WebsterMiracleField.org. This segment of the Rochester Press Box is brought to you by The Distillery. Four convenient locations, The Distillery, your choice destination for Sunday brunch with great food and drink specials, plus all of the games. The Distillery, a Best of Rochester award winner, tap into good times at The Distillery. Welcome back to the original Rochester Press Box. This portion of the Press Box brought to you by The Distillery, where you can pick up half-price appetizers every night, Sunday through Thursday, after 9 o'clock. Real good deal. Michael, the Buffalo Bills, 2014 was a, like a, yeah, it was a great year. People got reinvested in this team. As we move forward now, where do you think this team goes? Well, they're a different franchise now. And John mentioned before about destination jobs. And, you know, who knows what ends up happening yeah. at some point coaching-wise. But I think it's become even different for players. And, you know, it's easy to been down on the Bills before this. You know, right away people would talk about the weather. And, but you had an older stadium. You didn't know about ownership. There was no stability. Yep. And I think now, if you're a player in the NFL, players will go where there's money and where there's other players. And Buffalo yep. has both of those things Good now. Point. We can all talk about they don't have the quarterback. We know that. But they got a lot of other talented guys. And I do believe teams and players around the league will not be going like, why would this guy go to Buffalo? I think there's going to be a lot of players thinking that way. So I yep. think that is what... Terry Pagula has done so far. Stability and ownership, the new stadium, they're not going anywhere. And I think it has become on the road to what it used to be. they got a long, long way to go to be Getting that, close. but at least they're on the road towards that. Well, we haven't said that. They, they have plotted a course. Now, we, they still don't have a quarterback. And I'm anxious to see if everything ends up. What do they do? If they get in the playoffs or if you win nine games, do you bring both quarterbacks back? Does Kyle Orton want to be back? If he's going to come back, he's going to want a contract extension. Mm -hmm. And now... At least Russ Brandon and Doug Willie are off the hook somewhat because that first-round pick is going to be about 18th or 19th. You can live with that. If it was a top-10 pick, right, yeah, right. we have been calls when they have been <laughs> calling for Doug Willie, been calling for Russ Brandon to step down. Now that pick, you can you can stomach the pick trading away to get Sammy Watkins. Now it's going to be somewhere around 18 or 19. But what are we going to do on draft day, Danny? Two things yeah, worry me. Right. I worry about the window, the window of opportunity how wide it is, and the ceiling in terms of 2014 is this as good as this team can get as currently constructed. Well, the window's closing, and you've mentioned it before. Defenses, eventually you're going to have to pay a lot of people, and eventually you're not going to be able to pay all of them. So you need to cash in on that while you have the chance. But where the ceiling is is how far the quarterback can take them. We all know that that's the kind of league that we're in. Defense, as long as your defense can be very good, you can win games. It's not going to win you championships. Because your offense still has to be average. You look at Seattle. I don't think they have a high-powered offense. 
they have an adequate offense. Russell Wilson gets enough done. The Bills need somebody that can come in and be adequate, that can move the ball down the field, that can make a third down throw, because right now it doesn't look like Orton's doing that hmm. in the time being, and it almost looks like he's regressing. So you got to get in now. Yeah, quarterbacks can raise the ceiling and expand yeah. it, okay? Because you look at when you say, uh, and, and that, that time frame of that they have, when you've got a quarterback, you build around it. But you look around the league at teams, I'll use the New Orleans Saints as a good example. They've got the quarterback and the coach. I know he's older, but he's yeah. still right. Drew Brees and the coach. But they almost have nothing else around them. They are a mess that may still make the playoffs. I guess what I'm saying is you need everything. But in order to yeah. go long term, and in order to, you talk about it, have a window, to make that window wider, you've got to have a quarterback to do that. You can only survive so long being sure. the little engine that could. Well, so the million dollar question is, is, is that guy on the roster now? I don't think so. No. No, but if they're in the playoffs or if they finish nine and seven, even, yeah, 10 and six, what do you do? I think both of them are back next year. Well, I that really could be the case, but, I you, think that, but that's not the answer. No, but if you have a guy for, if you yep. think he's short term, say it's Orton, EJ, whatever, maybe you aren't as, not say desperate, but maybe you can look in different places yeah. and find a guy that for whatever reason isn't working out. I always bring up Sam Bradford. I think Sam Bradford is one of those guys you take the right opportunity with. I like him. Let him stay healthy. He has ability. He was yeah, first overall let pick. Let him stay healthy. Well, that has always been a case right. for him. But maybe that's why you may be able to get him. Because if he was healthy, he'd yeah. be signing back with the Rams. I just uh, that window, though. You know, it, it clo in two years, the defense isn't going to be as good as it is now. And the yeah. opportunities are going to be different. You've got to do England's, it now. New England's window has been so yeah. wide and long because they've had Brady and Belichick. Yeah, exactly. yeah. That's what it really expands, expands the window. This portion of the Rochester Press Box brought to you by The Distillery. We'll be back with our unfinished business after this. Tap into good times. The Distillery is your destination for great food, drinks, and sports viewing entertainment. Join us Sundays for our brunch menu starting at 11 a.m. featuring huevos rancheros, breakfast burrito, BLT fried egg sandwich, and the hangover frittata. Add to that two-for-one Bloody Marys and margaritas and great beer specials, and you have a winning combination. Sunday brunch at all four distillery locations and thedistillery.com. The Distillery. You don't need to be Native American to realize it is offensive, and it's not politically correct. It's the right thing to do. He was an idiot for throwing him that pitch. The guy's phenomenal. He had no reason yeah. to give him anything, especially a fastball to hit. It's simply that these two guys, Ronaldo and Tom Brady, are too good looking. <laughs> I like it, just don't admit to it. <laughs> Everybody wants to hate on the best in the world. You know, he's here, he's here to stay, and he wants to build something big time. The bottom line is, still nobody's gonna like A-Rod. Welcome back to the original Rochester Press Box Holiday Edition. Unfinished Business, John. I'm fired up that the NFL, I actually agree with the NFL. They're talking about expanding the playoffs 
in 2015. That would be next season, expanding by one team in each conference. Myself, Billy, and Mike are old enough to remember when they just took one wild card. Then they expanded to two wild cards. You know, by 1990, the playoffs were expanded, and, and of course, here we are today. I love the format. I don't mind adding one extra team. This is this may uh, enhance, I should say, the Buffalo Bills chances of snapping that playoff drought. Listen, the only team that would get a bye would be the top seed in both the AFC and the NFC. To me, everything kind of stays the same. I don't think it's watered down. You're talking about 14 teams making the playoffs. You get six in each conference, 14 overall. The last time I checked, there are 32 teams in the league. So less than half would make the playoffs. To me, the NFL finally getting something right. The breakdown, and I think the important part, too, is that it's not damaging the yeah. chances of the team that finishes first overall. Absolutely. So the best team is actually getting more of a break, which fits in, you know. Here's the, what the they should thing. do, and I think uh, once you take all the division winners, but they could start seeding teams. That may help. I don't know, I don't know why the NFL won't seed teams. Yeah. Well, Give, we'll see. They should. Danny. Right. We've talked earlier about how the NFL is the no-fail league. I'd also like to mention that playing in the NFL is a privilege, it's not a right. And as Mike said before, that while the commissioner has made mistakes, and, and I agree 100%, I want the NFL for Christmas and for the next year to be even harsher on players. I'm sick and tired of DUIs, domestic violence, and drug, all these things happening outside of the field. And the players talk about how it's so unfair dealing with the commissioner. Well, guess what? The commissioner, the owners, and the NFL will pay you millions of dollars as long as you don't drive drunk, beat up your wife, or do drugs. It doesn't seem like they're asking a whole lot. <laughs> and going forward, it just blows my mind that at what point does the NFL say to Ray McDonald, Greg Hardy, Adrian Peterson, and Ray Rice, go play in the CFL, go play in the Arena Football League. Guess what? No, there aren't fewer people going to Vikings games or Ravens games. The talent of the NFL is still great. There's always another guy up. I just wish for Christmas the NFL would be a little bit harsher on their players. Always happens in the off season. Now, if the NFL couldn't figure out a way to have a 12-month season, <laughs> right? You know, then there would be no problem. I just, I just have a hard time feeling guilty for these guys, and they're saying oh, it's not fair. All right. Hey, can we give a Christmas wish? This is right. So this is my my wish for the holidays and for the season is that things change a little bit in uh, the way fans and even some of us in the media deal with circumstances that happen in sports. You know, we all talk about Twitter and a lot of things that give people the opportunity to react. And every week you guys have heard me talk about the NFL being a week-to-week -week <laughs> league. Yeah. But that's not the way people respond to things now. My point is, it's okay to have an opinion. It's okay to respond. But I think at some point we need to learn every response and every reaction doesn't have to be over the top all the way yep. team loses a game they're not finished a coach makes a bad call he's not a total idiot a player makes a mistake he shouldn't be cut my point is everybody should have an opinion and everybody has now a mechanism to give an opinion but sometimes maybe you think about <laughs> making long-term <laughs> judgments on short-term situations because when it all comes down to it you know, things usually play out the way they're supposed to. And I think sometimes overreaction to things in sports makes it a little tough to take. That's really the kind of year it was. I it think really we, was. I think we all learned that. Yep. Yeah. Facebook and Twitter. I've got sort of a, a Christmas story to relate. Mm -hmm. I used to play touch football with the neighborhood kids in oh. my backyard. Uh, <laughs> you know, we get in the huddle and stuff. So there was this one day that... <laughs> that I'm, I'm playing. My team is losing. My team always lost. But we had had a we had sustained a drive and we were in close to, to getting a touchdown. So I gathered the kids together. These are all about grade schools. It says, look, we've worked too hard to screw this up now. And they didn't use the word screw. And the kids go, whoa, Mr. Pucko swore. <laughs> and it was like, and they were like friends for life now. They thought this was, they thought for some reason, it's just a kid's mind that that's really impressive. It made me think about that when all the fuss was made a couple weeks back when Tom Brady got caught F-bombing three times on the sideline. There's Facebook, there's Twitter. These kids know what's going on. They proved that to me. Uh, three words. Let it go. They thought you were cool, the kids? Wow. <laughs> if if that's kids? all it took. <laughs> How old are these kids? They weren't the most intelligent <laughs> kids. You're going to find We'd like to thank the distillery for their part in... Uh, promoting and sponsoring the original Rochester <laughs> Press Box. And, of course, for you guys, it's been great Billy, all year. John, great happy year, holidays. Billy. You too, buddy. Michael, thank you. Enjoyed it. Dan Bates, good job. Thanks a lot. And thank you for watching. We'll see you again next week.